What's up guys, it's SLG's found you here. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing my Orochi stats. Now, these stats are for my armor and weapon pieces. I'm going to be going over the ones I selected, as well as just talking about what those stats do in general to your character. This is going to be a part one of a series of Orochi videos I'm going to be doing in the near future, consisting of builds and me just showing you different types of combos that isn't shown in the game and how to combat all sorts of different classes using those combos. So anything to improve in Orochi's playstyle is what I'm aiming to do here soon. Alright, so let's get started here. Okay you guys, so starting off with me just clarifying, I'm not a noob, I know what I'm talking about. I'm a Reputation 7 with a 3KD, I've been playing as the Orochi uh, class since the closed beta. So, alright, there's that. Um, helmet here. The trickiest stat that a lot of people don't really understand is debuff resistance. What some people do know about it is that it actually guards you against uh, feats that hit you. So if someone uses like a debuff build that reduces your defense or your sprint speed, something of that sort, it reduces those effects applied to you. If someone hits you with a bleed effect, it also reduces the bleed duration on you. And something that people don't really know a lot about yet is debuff resistance actually helps against you being stunned by certain moves that people hit you with, as well as it decreases the duration of you being knocked down on the ground, so it allows you to get up quicker. For my helmet, and well, for my overall build, I actually chose to be a revenge mode type fighter. That's what the majority of people are leaning to. It really does have its perks. So I chose revenge mode duration as my primary to just maximize, you know, my revenge mode build. And exhaustion recovery as my secondary. I picked exhaustion recovery over debuff resistance because a lot of people are using feats that take away all your stamina like the bear traps and stuff that berserkers use for the viking faction to me having a high exhaustion recovery you know really allows you to clutch out those close fights that you're in and bigger characters that the Orochi fights against as they parry your attacks and use guard breaks and stuff that takes away your stamina and you'll find yourself without it really quickly if they keep chaining those parries and combos against you. So that really does help in the long run. So for the chest, I chose sprint speed as my primary. Now that to me is like one of the most noticeable stat changes. Being able to outrun your opponents to either catch them and slay them or to outrun them in difficult circumstances is absolutely perfect. It perfectly fits the assassin role. Execution health regen to me beat out block damage. Block damage just being you know the overall damage that you integrate when you guard against an attack. Execution health regen when you can get it off especially for an Orochi that has low health to begin with is absolutely perfect so of course I chose that. Got me the arms here. Stamina regen you know, when you're doing your combos as an Orochi, you normally counter against an attack and you do a combo, which takes away your stamina, then you can go back into that defense mode, that counter mode that you're, you're accustomed to getting into. Having a maxed out stamina region allows you to get all your stamina back in between your combo chains relatively quickly. So I don't really have to worry about my stamina whatsoever unless I trip into a feat or get comboed by someone that's parrying me or using those ridiculous spam moves that involve guard break like moves on you. And of course I chose revive speed. Revive speed is just crucial in those, you know, team player type objectives that you like to get into with your pals. Um, block damage resistance is just your overall damage that you do to someone when they're blocking against your attacks. Having that all the way raised instead of you doing only like three damage to someone that guards against your attack you only do about nine damage so it, it does go up quite a bit but as an Orochi you're not looking to hit someone that's guarding so not something I really prioritize that highly 
So for my blade, of course I chose to maximize my attack, maximizing my assassin themed build with the Orochi. Having a secondary stat being my defense helps with my overall just, you know, low health pull, low defense as the Orochi. You can take more hits, it does shine through way more than stamina cost reduction. If you're into like using your AoE moves and you like to apply a lot of pressure and not just wait to counter like I do, picking stamina cost reduction would be a good way to fit your overall playstyle. But for me personally, it's just not my my playstyle I'd, I'd like to choose and do. So for the hilt, I didn't go with feet cooldown reduction. This is a revenge mode build. I however like I have seen like people use feet cooldown reduction for like the max hilt that they own and it owns. Getting those feats very quickly is something that a lot of people are kind of moving into for their builds. I don't like it too much. I like to do my 1vx's in revenge mode rather than relying on a feat to do it for me. So my primary is revenge gained by defense, you know, you guard against attacks you get your revenge mode so quick. Having it maxed out the way I do, I only have to guard against like two attacks against two people. So once I guard two attacks and like a 1v2, boom, I'm in my revenge mode stance and I'm ready to dish out damage at that point. And revenge mode defense, you know, revenge mode overall go for it. <laughs> it truly does help when you get to 108 and max these stats out. So with my revenge mode defense as high as it is, I actually take about one and a half times more damage than I would without it. So it's something that you'll be able to truly notice as an Orochi with low health. This really does make you very tanky, especially when you stack it with just the defense that your blade has in general. So moving on to the guard, I chose revenge gain by injury. Um, being able to guard against attacks to get revenge mode, if you take damage you get revenge mode, and having a feat that gives you revenge mode while attacking is like a triple threat combo. Anything you do will allow you to get revenge mode with the Orochi build that I use. So I chose that with my secondary attribute being revenge mode attack. Revenge mode attack, with it being as it is, it essentially doubles your damage that you would normally do. Now, that's doubling your damage that you would normally do in revenge mode. The thing that some people don't know yet is that revenge mode actually stacks with your feats. So if you get revenge mode and you apply sharpened blade, your sharpened blades ability will be as double of what it used to be. It will allow you to have double the effects. So I like to stack my revenge mode with sharpened blade with fear itself and having all three at once as I'm going to show an example of allows you to almost one shot people with just one AOE attack. One light attack can practically one shot an enemy if you can stack these together. Just having one stacked on top of it is already powerful enough. So here's what I was talking about earlier, revenge attacks. It's just a passive that you get very quickly. You don't need to have like a high feet cooldown reduction to get these first two passives. You get this and you know, you're already ready to go with your revenge mode gains. And Bounty Hunter is perfect. As an Orochi, you don't do a lot of heavy attacks to finish off your opponents. Most of the time, you're using light attack chain combos. So, getting health just in general from attacking your opponents and killing them from anything truly does work in the end. Alright, so here's that example I was talking about. So, what you're getting ready to see is me actually stacking both my feats and getting revenge mode. I'm going to be showing you the amount of damage you can do. Now that's pretty much a whole health bar. If you can get off just one of the combos, like just one of those feats with your revenge mode, it's devastating. And here with this example, I'm actually showing that if you get your revenge mode and wait a second, you can actually activate your feat Use revenge mode after you activate the feat to animation cancel your 
your applying of that feat to your character that he does. And that just makes it so you have both all at the same time and you can just devastate opponents that do not expect you to have that feat. Alrighty, so that's the end of this video. If this video helped you at all, please give it a like to support the channel. Um, I'm always looking to do future For Honor content, so give us a subscribe to see those latest videos of ours. Of course, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.